Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So it's a new arrival and it's, for me, this is the most iconic car from Tamiya of all time. Now I know that word iconic gets banded around a lot and with a lot of different cars and I think it depends what was around you back in the day in the golden era of RC. Um, for me, it's the Grasshopper, without doubt. Um, and I absolutely love the thing. Um, it's just, it's just awesome. It's just, it's just Tamiya. It's a golden era of RC. Um, so in this video, it's not, I'm, I'm saying it's a new arrival. I'm not even going to open the box up. I'm, I'm guessing everyone will know what's inside the box. Um, obviously it's got to be built yet. But uh, yeah, I thought we'd pay homage to the Grasshopper today. So the Grasshopper came out in 1984 originally, um, part number 58043, 1984. Interesting fact from uh, Tony's Tamiya parts. Um, by the early 90s, Tamiya had sold over a million Grasshopper kits. A million Grasshopper kits in the early 90s. So if you... Let's call the early 90s. Let's take back to 1994. So that means it had been so it'd been out for 10 years and they'd sold over a million kits. And then it wasn't seen again until 2005, which is a re-re. Um, that came out, let me get the date for you. That was June, in, as I said, 2005, on 58346. That's what this kit is. And again, so that's 2005. So... I've got nothing to back up these little statements I'm going to make now, but this, these are just gut feelings. From 2005 until now, what's that, 50, 16 years, I think Tamiya will a minimum have sold another million grasshoppers. I'm sure of it. I kind of think more, and I'm not even I'm not even including the two variants of it, the, the black edition and the candy green edition. I'm just talking about the standard kit. I could be way wrong. I don't know. I just think... I just think because of the nostalgia of it and the, and the cost of it, um, with it being a fairly cheap kit, I I think we're looking at minimum way over, and I mean way over two million kits sold. I'd love to, I'd love to get hold of the actual stats from Tamiya. Um, so I'm going to make another statement which I can't back up at all. Again, just gut feeling. For me, this has to be the biggest selling RC car of Tamiya. In since day one has to be. I don't actually think there's up there's one other kit that might have come a little bit close to this, but it certainly won't have beat it, and that's the lunchbox. But I, I think hands down, if we could get the figures from Tamiya, the Grasshopper would be biggest selling kit of all time, and it'd be and it'd be by a massive amount. And then, as I say, followed up by the lunchbox, and then I don't know what possibly the Hornet. I don't know. And then after that, I don't think anything comes close in figures wise. That's that's how popular this kit is. And I'm, and I'm I don't think it's popular because of the price. I just think it's such a cool vintage design buggy. So what I did was I um, I had a look on the in the first 100 and just to see where the grasshopper was on the the timeline to that. Um, so Tamiya's first ever two-wheel drive off-road RC car was the XR311. Now, I think that was back in 79. All metal chassis. Basically, it was a static model that you could make into an RC car, pretty much. I mean, that's how Tamiya started. Um, what was after that? And then, a little bit later down the line, we saw the first of the SRBs, the first one being the Sand Scorcher. So a lot of metal on that kit and a bit of a tank. Not long after that came the same, but the Rough Rider version. Um, and then a little bit later on came a Holiday Buggy. Um, and then a little bit after that came the um, Sand Rover. But again, a lot less metal on those, a lot more plastic. But that was such a... You know that gearbox... I mean, if you know the Holiday Buggy and the Sand Scorch, you'll know that gearbox design open gears at the back you know it's it, it it was fragile to say the least it wasn't what you kind of it wasn't robust for back in the day and then some more time passed and then the frog came out um frog half metal half plastic big sort of metal gearbox bit of metal on the front uprights 
but a lot of plastic and that was a lot more robust given from what we'd seen in the past from Tamiya but still did have the issues with the gearbox and the drive um, cups and the dog bones and stuff falling out but frog great car and then came this so I think it's kind of it, it was a little bit of a game changer for Tamiya wasn't it it was all plastic and it was bloody robust for what it was now when I say, I've had this conversation with people about when I say, oh, it's a robust car, and they'll turn out that, well, I, I broke it min mo loads of times. And, you know, they're running it on 2S and 3S with silly brushless combos. Bear in mind, this was designed, uh, well, I'll go, yeah. This was designed for a 540 silver can and a, a 7.2 volt MiCAD battery. That's what it was designed for. Obviously, the original kit did come with the 380 motor, but whoever bought that kit pretty quickly upgraded to the 540 silver can. So you've got to remember when we're talking about these cars in modern day terms and we're saying it's robust, we're saying it's robust for that kind of radio gear, not a nine turn brushless on 3S. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's my point. It was a bit of a game changer because of the design of it and it was pretty bulletproof. I mean, the gearbox is 100% bulletproof. All you got to do is stick a full, full bearing kit in it, as I say, a 540 motor and you're aware, run it on 2S, and it's awesome. And it's a hopper, you know? What I'll do, just before, um, I'll stop now, and I'll just, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I, all the links to this vid these videos I show you will be in the description of this video, but um, here's a quick 30 second clip of my brother. He's a lot younger and he's a lot slimmer than me, um, a couple of years ago, um, just running the grasshopper. The first short clip was it on a 380 motor, and then the second was on the 540. Hey guys, what's going on? Right, we're out. It's um, time to get the the old girl running. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes a hell of a difference. <laughs> Well, that was absolutely awesome. I am like a kid again. But sorry, I'm absolutely buzzing. That was so much fun. And that's why the Grasshopper is probably the best Tamiya car ever, in my opinion. But I think a few others. Thanks for watching, guys. God, he got a bit excited, didn't he? I told him he needs to calm down. But he's a good lad. He's a lot skinnier than me. Anyway, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I played you that clip because... I've run many grasshoppers, um, and I'd shot that video probably about eight months after I got to Canada. Uh, I'd had a bit of a layoff from the RC, and the grasshopper was one of the first kits I got. And obviously, full radio again. That was actually running the Free Step uh, mechanical speed controller as well. Um, but I just, I just, you can see it in my face. I mean, those reactions. That's genuine. It was just, it just put such a smile on my face. Um, I think some people expect a little bit too much of this on performance and you'll you'll see it on the forums you'll ask well, how can I upgrade this grasshopper or the hornet you know what what are these oil front shocks like the, the aftermarket ones on eBay don't bother it's not what the car's for I don't think you'll ever improve a grasshopper if I'm honest without dramatically like cutting and shoving parts into it you know but it's not meant to it is what it is it it kind of does what it says on the can as it were you know, it hops about. You get that, that, how can you explain it? That noise when you're running them, which is like no other car, well, a, a, the Hornet's the same, you know, where it's, you, you're ragging it around and it's just bouncing, hopping on the back end and you can hear it revving in between as it as it, as the wheels come off the ground and then slow down as it bangs down. It's just, it's awesome and that's what, that's, that's what it's for. It's such a great, it's, I love it, as you can see. Um, I'll just play another little clip. Here's um, a grasshopper doing 42 miles an hour. I made this video a couple of years ago. Uh, this was, I got hold of a, a very old um, brushed motor and it had a crazy wind. It was a seven double. Um, it was one with the V10, I think it is N-Bell, Team Orion or Orbital, can't remember. No, it was Peak, Peak or so. anyway, whatever. But it was an, a seven turn double brush motor. So uh, we took it out and speed tested it on 2S and 3S. So this short clip here is um, just it running on, on 3S. There's two passes on the second one. It, it achieved just over 42 miles an hour. 
And what's cool about that is, I mean, that's quick, but what's cool about that is it was in standard form. All that Grasshopper had was full bearing kit um, and no other mods to it whatsoever, obviously, apart from the motor and the battery. But um, anyway, enjoy. Right, guys, 3S. Fingers crossed. Cut out. Wasn't happy. <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? I'd forgotten about that. I, I dug that out while, obviously, when I was deciding to make this video. And, it, and again, it put a massive smile on my face because I'd forgotten I'd done it. Such a shame that motor wire came off. I think it had more because that day was it was a day from hell when you're making a running video. Nothing was going right. Um, right to the end when the motor wire unsolded itself but uh, I think we could have got it quicker to be honest but hey not to worry not something I'll revisit again so yeah I bought this for my collection um, probably won't run it I'll build it for the shelf but within that it'll be built so it could run if that makes sense so when we do build it we'll put a full bearing set in it um, just it will be I am thinking I've got a couple of old mechanical speed controllers kicking around um, and on the um, parts trees for the on the re, re it still comes with the same part trees for the original where you can mount um, your manual sorry your me mechanical speed controller so I might put that in just for fun just for a little bit of show um, I will order a set of MCI reproduction decals there's um, there's one two I think I think the spotlights change, there's a weather that changes and then the main decal on the roof is different um, than the re -re. So I'll just order them. So I wanted to make it look 100% box art. Um, and that'll be it. And I'll, paint the, I'll do the tyre writing on the tyres as well. These tyres are just the worst ever tyres to um, do the tyre writing on. They're just, the writing's horrendous, it's so small. But if you take your time and you get it right, it's, one, it's actually one of the best wheel and tyre sets when it's uh, the writing's done in white looks absolutely epic so I think that's about it it's just such an awesome kit how many of you guys watching one of two things how many of you guys watching saw this as the first ever RC car you ever saw back in the day and secondly how many of you guys was this your first ever RC car that you actually had that that the answers to that will be huge you know for me i should have said this at the beginning the grasshopper was the first ever rc car i saw i won't go into it because i've talked about it hundreds of times on this channel but uh, and i think that's why it has a special uh, special place in here um just awesome i just think it, I, I just love it yeah it's basic people come people newish to the hobby or not sort of i new to tamia they'll look at it and they'll think it's pretty crap i understand that but it's 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 the ties you have to it that make this special and uh again for me it's, it's just one of well i'll say it again this is the most iconic tamiya car of all time for me so i don't think i've got anything else to say just a great thing i'll build it soon but i'm in no rush um Anyway, what I'll do is I'll end this video here. So thanks so much for watching. It's massively appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. And if anyone else is still watching, stick in the comments what your most iconic car is um, from back in the day. I'll be really interested to read that, guys. Anyway, happy hour scene. Mm -hmm.